Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, we have people joining us from around the world. So maybe as people are trickling in, uh, we can ask you to uh, write your name, uh, company, and location in the chat. We have Anna from Ireland, welcome. Marie from France. Hala Luz, Barcelona. Italy, Maha from Dubai. Denmark, UK, Brazil. Moscow, Canada, France, UK. New York, Scotland, Sri Lanka. Hello, Lakmal from Sri Lanka. Sorry, it's very late for you, probably. <laughs> Copenhagen, Germany. Stella from Jordan. Great. We have an international crowd today. So I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, first, I'd like to just uh, remind everybody that we have uh, live interpretation available. We have today um, French and Spanish and Portuguese. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a, uh, a globe uh, um, emote, what is it called? <laughs> uh, visual, and it says interpretation under. So if you click on that, you can choose the... Uh, choose the language that you prefer to listen to this uh, presentation. So again, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation about the Women's Empowerment Principles or the WEPs as they're known for short. We have many companies in the room um, kicking off their journey with the Target Gender Equality Accelerator or TGE. So welcome to the TGE participants. Um, and um, we hope to see many of you sign the WEPs over the course of the program as we will be covering the WEPs in much greater detail throughout the uh, accelerator. So we're hoping you can leave this session with a better understanding of the WEPs, including the principles themselves, how to become a signatory, why it's beneficial for business to sign the WEPs, and the resources and tools available to WEP signatories, um, supporting the signatories to better advance gender equality across the workplace, the marketplace, and the community. Please feel free to write your questions in the chat throughout the session and we'll respond in written form and discuss some of the FAQs at the end if we don't have time. Um, we will be uh, walking you through the um, WEPS principles and then we will have a discussion with uh, two company participants who have uh, signed the WEPS in the last uh, two, three years just to hear about their journey with the WEPS. Um, and then there will be an opportunity for a short Q&A, and then we'll conclude the session. So to get us started this morning, I'd like to quickly introduce um, UN Women and UN Global Compact WEPS team at the global um, headquarters level. So we have Anna Falt joining us, and she's the global head of the WEPS Secretariat from UN Women. We also have uh, Miwa Park. Uh, she's the WEPS coordinator and uh, as part of the WEPS secretariat. We also have um, Cynthia Mufu, who will be joining us um, shortly. She's having some technical difficulties, but she's the head of human rights and gender at the UN Global Compact. And then we have myself, <laughs> uh, Lina al -Padumi. I'm the manager of gender equality and social sustainability at UN Global Compact. We also have Elizabeth um, Resch, who uh, the TGE participants are, are very familiar with, and she'll be supporting us as well. So without further ado, um, Elizabeth, if you would like to say a few words. Thanks, Lena. And yes, I just also wanted to give a warm welcome to everyone. You, many of you in the room, as Lena mentioned in the beginning, are target gender equality participants, current or past. 
So just to flag again that, of course, in target gender equality, we are talking about target setting. But nevertheless, this commitment, this public statement through the women's empowerment principles is really, really crucial for you to guide your gender equality action. So that's why I'm so excited to see so many familiar names here on the list. And we will also be talking about the web, their framing and how they can really help you put together an action plan, a strategy and ambitious targets throughout the rest of the year. So thank you all for joining and I hope we're going to have a fruitful session here today. Looking forward to all the different questions that are going to come in. And thank you to Miwa and Anna as well for guiding us um, through this session and for the partnership throughout. Welcome everybody and back to you, Lina. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and now I'd like to hang hand over to uh, Miwa to share with you about the WEPS uh, tool and uh, all the principles. Perfect. Um, thank you, Lena. Hello from UN Women. My name is Muya Park, and I'm the WEPS coordinator at um, Women's Empowerment Principles Secretariat at the UN Women. So I'm very excited to walk you through the WEPS principles and tools that you could use to advance gender equality and women's empowerment in your company's mar workplace, marketplace, and community. Um, so the WEPS provide a holistic framework for companies to advance gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, marketplace, and community, and drive positive outcomes for society and business. So it provides a roadmap for implementing Sustainable Development Goal 5, and currently more than 8,100 CEOs from over 155 countries around the world had made the WEPS commitment. So with the increasing importance of ESG, many companies have realized the importance of gender equality, yet uh, many are unclear on how to concretely advance gender equality and women's empowerment. So the companies are using WEPS as a blueprint to position gender equality at the core of its business strategy and operations. So moving toward this direction helps companies with um, better talent acquisition, higher, um, employee retention and satisfaction, increased productivity and better decision making. And also with improved performance, it helps attracting investors. Um, so my key message today is that gender equality is not just a woman's issue, but rather it's a smart business strategy. In fact, um, there are numerous data and evidence indicating this and WEPS can be your starting point um, and guiding framework. Um, so one of the UN women's studies that analyzed the performance of the largest 350 companies in the G7 countries shows that web signatories outperform their competitors on 12 key gender performance indicators. Moving on, oops. This next slide is to show you what becoming a web signatory means. So your company joins the web's journey to advance gender equality and women's uh, empowerment. And your company is expected to make progress and report on the result. So becoming a web signatory does not end with signing the CEO statement of support and creating your profile um, company profile page. This is just the start, as you can see on the web's journey diagram. So your company also need to work on engaging internal and external stakeholders and make ongoing and meaningful progress after signing up. So we encourage companies to tackle deeply rooted systematic inequalities within and outside of their workplace rather than just taking the easy road. Sorry, I'm having some trouble with my slides, but next slide, we offer, the Web Secretariat offer over 200 tools and resources to guide companies on how to work on these seven principles. So today I'll introduce you some of the tools that you can use to make progress toward each principles as I'll walk, walk you through the principles one by one. So going on to the principles, principle number one um, is on high level corporate leadership. So it's crucial for the CEOs to make WEB's commitment for the sustainable follow through of the initiative by the companies. So with CEO support, it's possible to make gender equality and women's empowerment a top strategic priority and WEB's can become part of this corporate sustainability strategy, day to day operations and changing organizational culture. So throughout the years, um, we have witnessed what a difference it can make what, when the CEO has made this commitment and by doing it publicly. 
So it has an implication for the sustainability of the commitment. So you can use these web uh, tools that we are recommending to help you make changes. So we've picked out some tools related to principle one that you uh, we'd like to recommend for you to use. Um, so you can use these tools to get ideas and learn from other companies' examples on how they worked on solving problems or issues that your company may have been facing. So these are two things that uh, there are two things that I would like to mention as a fundamental tool, tools or 101 tool. So if you do not have a gender action plan, don't worry. Um, you can take the WEBS Learns module from webs.org website on how to create your gender action plan. So this module provides a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your roadmap to advance gender equality and women's empowerment. And you can obviously reach out to the web secretariat to get advices and um, we can answer any of your questions. Then we recommend you to take the WEBS Gender Gap Analysis tool. So this tool helps you to identify your strengths, gaps, and opportunity for your company to improve performance on gender equality. You can use this tool to assess your company's strategic approach to gender equality and identify gaps and opportunities for continuous improvement. Um, and then there are guidance notes. Um, on building inclusive boards to achieve gender equality. So this note provides business case for building inclusive boards to achieve gender equality and also provide guidance on co to companies to work towards building an inclusive board. And then you can learn from a second study that looks into a web signatories program to enable women in the company to build their leadership skills while being championed and sponsored by the leaders in the company. So we also recommend you to take a look at the um, stories of Web Award winners to learn from them as well. So principle two, treating all women and men fairly at work aligned with international human rights principles. So it means paying equal remuneration for equal work, fostering inclusive workplace culture, and removing gender-based discrimination from all policies and practices. So working on principle two leads to better talent acquisition, higher employee retention and satisfaction that will lead to increased productivity and better decision making. So we offer many different tools that you could use to work on, um, this to on the topics that are related to principle two. So the first one that we'd like to recommend today is the guidance note on closing gender pay gap to achieve gender equality at work. So this note shows how closing the gender gap makes business sense and benefits for both employers and employees. It provides the steps um, uh, that companies can follow to removing gender pay gaps. And then understanding intersectionality. So intersectionality, you may not be familiar with the term itself, but you may be familiar with the concept if you are working with DEI uh, for a long time. So in intersectionality refers to the ways in which multiple forms of inequality exacerbate one another to create obstacles not often widely understood or visible by conventional ways of thinking. So this guidance note provides illustrative il examples and recommendations for companies to address discrimination and foster diversity, equality, and inclusion with a specific focus on intersectionality. And then the last one is our one of the newest tools. Um, we have a checklist for gender responsive recruitment. This checklist can help you to verify your recruitment process and ensure that it fits gender responsive. So we have a lot more resources on principle two. So please utilize them to guide you or inspire you with actions that could be thought outside of the box. Then moving on, uh, principle three, so employers play a key role in preserving and promoting uh, both physical and emotional health, safety, and well-being for all of their employees. So this is another principle that focuses on the workplace issue. Um, it includes how people get from and to work and safety standard at work. Um, it, ex it expands into ensuring employees' well-being beyond workplace by supporting survivors of domestic violence. The companies may feel that it's none of their business, but it's everybody's business to deal with and support um, survivors of domestic violence. And it makes business sense to address this um, absenteeism, lower productivity, and et cetera, that violence generates. So we offer many resources that you can use as guidance to work on this principle as well. Uh, we wanted to recommend you this guidance note on tackling sexual harassment at work. 
um, that can help you support in prioritizing, establishing, and implementing robust sexual harassment policies and practices, which promote the physical and emotional health, safety, and well-being of all employees. And then you can also take a look at Web's action card called Tackling Sexual Harassment in the World of Work to learn about more recommendations for um, tackling sexual harassment in the workplace. Then we have a case study um, that shows how a web signatory worked on providing support of survivors of domestic violence in their workplace and in mitigating effects is the starting point of ensuring the safety and well-being of all staff. Moving on, prin uh, principle for education and tra training, as you well, uh, you, as we all know, can open venues for uh, women's advancement at all levels and across all business areas. It's to facilitate um, training for women to support them to advance in companies either um, horizontally or vertically. We encourage companies to look at areas where there's underrepresentation of women um, in areas such as IT and sales and let women be able to move to those areas. So companies are encouraged to provide training on gender equality to all employees as well, to have regular training session related to the webs or gender equality agenda that follow up on the commitment of the CEO and let the employees know what it actually means. To work on principle four, we recommend you to use these following tools. So Web's Learn platform is a great place to start for employees of your company. So when you go onto our website, um, www.webs.org, you can see a menu item called Learn on the uh, top tab of the screen. Then click on there to assess the courses that are de um, designed to help your employees. This is a virtual platform that offers learning opportunities for web signatories to deepen their implementation of the webs. And the lessons are designed to give women with more confidence in job interviews, lead gender equality initiatives within their organizations, um, the ability to assess new job opportunities and therefore grow in their careers more effectively. And then um, a guidance note on mentoring and in the workplace. So as you know, mentoring is an effective and increasingly popular way for private sector companies to promote women's, um, promote, uh, women's training and professional development and drive positive organizational culture change. So this guide offers guidance on developing and implementing a customized mentoring platform in your company. If your company do not have a mentoring program, this would be a great reference. And even if your company offers one, we recommend you to take a look at this guide to see if it's headed to the right direction um, to make more impactful changes. Moving on, oops, sorry. Um, so companies can influence the wider business ecosystem and business partners through inclusive supply chain policies standards and marketing and advertising by working um, in their marketplace. So we encourage web signatories to promote gender equality and webs in the supply chain, holding the company's supplier to uh, account. And lately we've been developing many tools to support web signatories on their work on the marketplace. We have a tool called Web's Gender Responsive Procurement Tool, Assessment Tool, this tool allows companies to assess progress on their gender responsive procurement policies and practices on um, GR, uh, gender responsive procurement. So this tool is consisted of 31 questions and the tool helps you to identify gaps and areas for improvement regarding um, your company's supply chain policies and practices based on the inputs provided by your company. And then we have a case study promoting growth for women-owned and woman-led business. Um, this showcases uh, web signatories' actions towards supporting women-owned businesses. So you can take a look at the steps um, this company had taken to get ideas for your company. So we hope to expand the range of the tools that are related to the marketplace and will continue to develop new tools in this area. So see, um, please stay tuned. Moving on to principle six, engaging with local communities is very important um, and engaging with girls and women in local community, um, the companies can build their brand values by engaging with them and at the same time support the local community and try to understand what the needs are and maybe doing a tra training that your company can provide. 
So I've been saying this over and over, but if you're a uh, our tech company, um, it could be a training on digital literacy or work with a local NGO that support women and girls to be empowered. So for community activities, we recommend you to take a look at the cases um, of WEBSA award winners and burn ups from Asia Pacific region. So these cases provide concrete steps taken by the web signatories to drive positive outcomes in their community. And you can ac um, ac access these tools in the resources page on webs.org. Uh, and moving on, the last principle, um, principle number seven. So reporting and measuring and reporting mechanisms are crucial to monitor and track performance um, and progress. So measuring and reporting are also crucial to in, um, attract investors. Investors are increasingly taking a look at gender equality as lens for their investment to measure return on investment and risk. So in May, we've hosted a second edition of Web's Deep Dive series, where we invited institutional investors to hear about their take on gender equality. So one of the panels said that they're investing in companies that are working on gender equality for pure return on investment um, perspective. And transparency is key to assess the attractiveness to invest. So if you're interested about this webinar, uh, in this webinar, you can listen to the recording on our website and a blog post will be available soon. So please stay tuned. Going back to the principles, um, instead of suggesting tool, here, we wanted to recommend actions that your company can actually do. So first is to gather data through internal and external stakeholder surveys, um, focus groups, and et cetera. And the second step would be reporting on your progress, hopefully on webs.org. So many of the signatories are reporting privately to you and women, but we want more companies to report publicly. So now signatories can link their annual report to their web's profile page, and we will soon host another web's induction series that teaches web signatories on how to do so. So today I try to like mix up the, um, the presentation a little bit so you can have more clear understanding of what you could do to progress um, and different principles. And I hope it was more interesting for you. It was interesting for you. And I hope my overview of the principles and tools have given you some ideas on how to work on each principle after becoming a signatory. And now I'll walk you through the joining process of how to become a web signatory. So joining the webs is a simple process. You are eligible if your company is legally registered and for profit company. So we are accepting Chamber of Commerce, um, Business Association and Industry Association as well. Unfortunately, we are not accepting any NGOs, MPOs, nor government at this point in time. Yet, Industry Association, again, Chamber of Commerce cooperatives are still eligible. So once you have confirmed your eligibility, go to this website, www.webs.org slash join, um, then fill out the form and submit the form. The form is pretty self-explanatory and you need to provide the information requested in each section. So there are a few things I like to emphasize for completing this form. So the first CEO statement of support, it needs to be signed with a date by the CEO or the person with the highest decision-making authority in your company. The date is very important because this date will be the date that shows up on your profile page as the day your company has joined the webs. The CEO statement of support needs to be signed by the highest decision-maker making authority that person is generally the CEO, managing director, chairman, et cetera, but I hope you get the idea. So just keep in mind that the idea here is to get the buy-in from the highest decision maker of the company. And then the uh, for CEO quote, we'd like for you to answer, how will you contribute to gender equality and tell us why this agenda matters to you and your company. So maybe share um, how you've been working and are planning to work on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment when you're filling this out. And then lastly, CEO photo is also very important. We only accept professional headshot and lo logo pictures uh, is accepted. So if you want to learn about the learn more about the eligibility criteria and steps of joining the webs, please visit our website. On our join page, you'll find answer to most of your questions and the things that I've just um, explained to you. 
Um, lastly, please visit webs.org where you can find all the tools that I introduced today and more are coming with updates. So we recommend you to visit, uh, visit the website often and taking a closer look at it. And also we'll be back with another Webs 101 series that by UN Women on 19th of October. So uh, please stay tuned. With that, that was all from my side. And now I'm giving the stage back to Lena. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mila. That was very informative and, and comprehensive. So I hope uh, we get more signatories after the, the call today and we're, we're all available to support if, if anyone has any additional questions after the call as well. Um, so now I would like to invite um, the panelists to join me and um, unmute yourselves for the panel discussion. Emma Ventin uh, is a member of the CSR and Sustainability Committee at uh, Berea Veritas, and she um, represents uh, Spain and Portugal. And uh, Vera Babat is the Chief Culture Officer at Abstracta, and she is based in Uruguay. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, I'd like to kick off this discussion with asking you um, simply why your company decided to join the uh, the webs. Why did why did uh, your CEO sign the webs? And and what do you think are some benefits of uh, of doing so? So um, Vera, if you would like to start. Sure. Thanks, Lena. Hi, everybody. Um, Okay, so this story I'm going to tell it in first person singular because by the time I entered Abstracta, I became a mom. And it was at that time that the gender gap appeared right in front of my eyes, bigger than ever. And, and so we started having lots of conversations. Um, I work in Abstracta. Abstracta is a testing company, it provides holistic testing services to tech companies, to any company or organization that is creating software, right? So uh, one day, my uh, I didn't have anybody to uh, take care for my kid, so I took my baby, and he was very welcomed. And it was like, okay, so we are talking about software quality all the time, and we should start talking about quality of life. What does it mean? to work with a better quality of life. And in my profession, I'm a psychologist. So we started having lots of conversations inside our team of what it meant to have a good quality of life while we were working. And that way, in this is a bootstrapped company in Uruguay. At that time, we were 60 people. And we started seeing that the gender perspective had a lot to do with what constituted a, a good quality of life for everybody. And that way, we started building, sensi we, we start sensi uh, creating workshops to um, increase our sensitivity towards the topic, right? This is a tech company, mostly men. 25% of the tech industry is women only. The women are underrepresented all the time. And men, there, there are lots of uh, gender stereotypes that are very strong there. And through that work, our board became more sensitive towards this. And one day we had the, we have the happy story of the CEO coming on to me and saying, hey, I read about this webs thing of the UN. I want our company to be known for this. And at the beginning for us, it was like, yeah, we do things, you know, we're a bootstrapped company. This, this is not for us. And we did the survey and we realized that there were many things that we were doing, but we never told this story right. So we signed the, the webs, we became a signatory company, but also we started using all the guidance, all the resources. And through the survey, we, we became aware of many ideas to improve what we were offering to the people that worked at, at Abstracta. And we made our commitments stronger each day. And well, um, 
it, our commitment is not only with uh, gender equality, but because of this well-being uh, core that we had so ingrained in our proposal, we became very committed with uh, SDGs 3, 5, and 8, which we didn't know at the time what they were. And this is the reason why I want to tell this story is because this is not just a corporate thing. This guided us to create that bridge between a company that had good intentions and the transformative opportunities that it has. And so basically that's how we became uh, a web signatory, why we think it was important for us and why we still continue in this road towards uh, promoting gender equality. It's not just good for women, you know? <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Vera. That's so interesting. And I love that the the WEPS was uh, the company's gateway into the sustainable development goals. Uh, we always talk about the sustainable development goal five of on gender equality as, as kind of the amplifier uh, SDG for short uh, for all of the, the remaining uh, sustainable development goals. So it's it's wonderful to hear that uh, the WEPS has enabled your company's journey through the other SDGs as well. Um, Hema, over to you. We'd love to hear about uh, your company's uh, journey with the web? First of all, Vera, your story counts from the heart. Uh, the best start for change. I love it. <laughs> In the case of Bureau Veritas, it's different. Uh, Bureau Veritas, um, we have been working on this commitment to equality for more than 11 years. The nature of our organization, our logo created in 1928, integrates the female figure as a central axis of the organization activities. And our responsibility as an organization is once again consolidated under the balance between our corporate image and our business identity. For these reasons, from our global objective, where we are working to increase the rate of women in leadership position to 35% to 2025, and our alignment with CDG5, specifically with the target fight point fight by stressing our percentage of women in management position, we saw that publicly assuming these principles, representing um, a firm consolidation of this initial commitment. This is undoubtedly the great benefits of our adherence of the webs, the consolidation of all our work toward women's empowerment with a public commitment that make, makes our work around equality and women's empowerment stronger. One of our greatest strategic objectives uh, is to increase gender awareness among company personnel and contribute to building a more egalitarian society. Signing the West formally responds to our effort to eliminate imbalances and inequalities between women and men, and to introduce the gender perspective into the management processes, um, selection and hiring, training, promotion and professional development, remuneration, organization of the working time, and occupational health. I can only say that today, within the Burobritas group, there have been very significant changes in terms of female leadership. For example, the new appointment of Teresa Rodon as CEO of Burobritas Spain and Portugal, who was the last president of the CSR and Sustainability Committee here, and the very recent appointment too of Jinda Garvey, the present Chief Executive Officer of Roberitas Global. This is my, the motivation to sign the web, principally. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's really interesting, and it's 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 nice to hear about how you're also um, planning to scale the implementation of of the webs as well in the in the in the interim. 
Um, it would be great, I think, for many of the, the uh, participants on the call today to hear about how did you uh, both go about securing the internal buy-in that is required for the to get the signature of the CEO for the for the webs. Um, is there any recommendation or advice that you have for for people listening in who are at that stage now? So I think that here, what we need is first lots of information. And it's good. I, I hear lots of uh, webinars on, on this topic and I hear um, a very managerial uh, and, and top, top um, decision-making conversation of this is good for business, but this is good for business, but this is good for society. You were talking about violence. We, well, I think in Spain, uh, some numbers are very similar, in, but in Latin America, violence against women is, is a huge problem. It's a huge burden in our society. And, and this goes to extremes, but this is uh, something that is very ingrained, you know, um, in our society and in the tech industry, this also happens. So for, for us, it was mostly understanding that this was part of a change that our society needs, that we're rooting for the well-being of people in general. And this uh, includes everybody in the organization. And if we can promote this and experiment this in our lives at work, then we are going to impact on how our we, we see our lives at home and also how we can impact maybe in our communities where, wherever it is that we work. Our CEO, for example, he lives in uh, the second biggest city in Uruguay, but it's 100,000 people. So we, we, our, our country uh, has 3.5 million people overall. So the second biggest city, Salto, and that's, uh, this is a community where much of this conversation still needs lots of work done, right? And so we, we took this conversation through the workplace to the community, and that has generated change and raised awareness on many people who are working directly in abstracta or who know somebody who worked there. And that, that is, um, it produces change, you know, it goes beyond business making. And, and that's where the commitment of business owners, of CEOs, of people in positions of power should come from. I mean, you need to have that conversation and not just make it because it's good for business. Um, we are clear that to guarantee, for example, the strategic alignment of the organization with the webs and with our goals regarding equality, we must have several key elements. One of them is the executive committee as a strategic lever for the change. Another relevant point is human resources department as a responsible for the monitoring and execution of the actions. And the CSR sustainability committee, like an observer body in the responsible management of the organization actions and the CSR ambassadors is very important too because Mm, they are uh, as a driving force and directly in with the workforce. To be honest, I have to say that we are, are still working on these principles. Mm, value structural chains are slow, very slow. Also, we have already oriented it our sport through our equality plans, where we have all these strategically collected goals which will be met throughout their validity. And for the impl implementation of each objective, uh, those actions of a more strategic nature have uh, been assessed and prioritized with training and awareness uh, being priority actions in the implementation of all of our equality plans. Among the actions we have planned, uh, we could Point, for example, guarantee health to balance with the gender perspective or um, in 
incorporate the gender perspective in the communication using the inclusive and non-sexist language, communicate the new operational strategy of Roberitas is another relevant point, like um, advance in the construction of a culture that promotes the balance of personal, family, and work life, promotes a work environment free of sexist expressions and behaviors, or make visible the company's commitment in favor of two SLDTVQEI plus people and other intersectional identities that can influence, especially women, to exercise the full enjoyment of human rights or to offer one more example of the actions uh, undertaken in Guberitas, the reduction of the weight uh, gap. I could detail other actions of our equality plans, but um, I think that with these examples, you can see the comprehensive analysis and interdepartmental work that we are doing. I think this is very important to, to finally achieve this goal. Thank you so much, uh, both of you, for sharing your 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 journey. It's it's uh, it's nice to hear about how you're, you're both coming from completely different country contexts and uh, corporate uh, slash SME context, and that it's still it's still very relevant to you to to um, become a signatory to the webs. And and Hema, I love your your how candid you were about how you know you're still on your journey, and and we want to reiterate that. You know, by no means um, does it mean if you're signing the the webs that you are, you know, super advanced on your gender equality journey. On the contrary, you know, it's a set of principles to support companies um, on their journey to gender equality. So what we hear sometimes from companies is the is hesitation. They say, you know, we're not ready yet to 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 join because we're not you know, we're not 100% uh, gender equal, but on, on the contrary, we, we encourage all companies to sign no matter where you are on your journey, because it, it is a journey. And we have a, um, a WEPS gender gap analysis tool that Niwa spoke about earlier. Um, I'll, I'll share the, the link shortly in the chat. And it's a, it's a, um, an assessment tool to see where you're at in, on the on your gender equality journey, and most companies are are beginner, and some are intermediate. So you know that's why we're we're all in this together, and we have many many tools to support support your company. Um, one of the tools is, for example, the the Target Gender Equality Program that I know many many uh, companies um, listening in today are are part of. So I'd love to hear from both of you um, about your company's participation in Target Gender Equality. Um, why do you believe that target setting is important to um, bring your own uh, webs commitments to life? Um, Hema, if you'd like to start, of course. Um, I would dare to say that. It is a key since participation in target gender equality opens up a detailed uh, analysis of the real situation in which your company live. If you already have this analysis, it shows many areas of improvement that allow you to consolidate your strategy around equality. And in the case uh, you did not have this analysis, I think that the Target Gender Equality Program points out the key issues to create it. To be honest, I thought our score would be higher given how long we have been working on this issue. And seeing these results allows us to delve into issues that we have not prioritized and ratified the importance of the actions that we had already initiated. That said, um, having objectives is essential for the strategy. And any change in organization must be done throughout a strategic plan, which allows you to measure and control actions and results. We have a project plan, it's true, that establishes actions 
and RYEs per quarter and therefore all equality plans. There are several departments working together on actions that share mates, human resources, communication, training, occupational hazard, as well as different committees such as CSR, equality, or the union representation. And to do that, we work with metrics that allow us to analyze the situation and progress. The representation with the percent, percentage by gender of total employees or the hiring, promotion, replacement. In conclusion, participating in the target gender equality showed as a map of improvement actions on a strategic level that is allowing us to improve our result on equality issues. Um, what can I say? Uh, from the leadership of our organization, for example, participating in this program and consolidating our actions around webs is allowing us to understand in greater depth at the organizational leadership level three key aspects. First one, that the gender equality is a lever for change, both internally and externally, which benefits both. And all the people who make up the organization, as well as the people and companies that collaborate in the business world. The second, second key is understand that equality is a principle of integral transformation towards sustainable development. At Bureau Veritas, it's a matter that we have been working um, on for a long time and a constant of continuous improvement for the organization. And the last one is highlight equality from the actions linked to Proverita sustainability and CSR policy as a strategic element of development. In order to, to achieve that, the communication of our plans to our stakeholder is key. The report of the conclusion of the diagnosis, the communication of our values, um, as well as the benefits of these actions and measures carry out to webinar like uh, now or information campaigns on the topic, the preparation of an inclusive language guide is another action that allow us to analyze our way of understanding and interpreting the environment or foster inclusive leadership in performance interview. Uh, <laughs> We have a long way to go, oh, of course, <laughs> I have. However, I think that the step we are taking undoubtedly have positive impact. Uh, these things I know are slow. Therefore, working on value for me is the key to the transformation of companies and society. In the case of Bureau Veritas, I think is uh, my big advice is uh, work um, to the values of your enterprise, of your business to, to make uh, the results that you have to do. So, In the case of the Vera, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, was, I, was, I was wondering, um... Where, where to aim what, what we are going to talk, because what Gemma uh, was, was saying was very comprehensive. So Lina, uh, would you mind repeating the question or what, what you think we should focus on right now? Yeah, sure. Uh, my question was just about uh, why your company um, has decided to join TGE and if you feel like it would support your, um, your journey uh, <laughs> by setting uh, targets internally. Okay, so I, I really resonate with some of the things that Gemma was bringing up. Um, firstly, because this is an ongoing process. Secondly, because this is a proposal. So you you propose, you see, you you do this, you do the service, you see where you're at, you come up with new ideas, you learn new things, you pro you promote other things, but then there is this dance where people see the value to it and you need to bring it to life constantly and for that you need to 
build these bridges between the policies and the impact that has in our lives. Because if not, especially men, for example, working in an IT company, women see it constantly. If we're talking about data, yes, 100% of the women at, at Abstract say this is a great place to work in. But men many times see, see it as a female issue. So we need to continue working on how gender equality, <clears throat> it has a lot to do with gender equality and giving room for diversity and the impact that has in innovation, in creativity, in our quality of life, in our well-being, uh, in, a, in a more holistic sense, right? So uh, the, target, the target gender um, came up to us because we're part of UN Comp uh, Global Compact and we realized that we had became a signatory of WEBS many years ago, that in an IT company, that means a time when 50% of the people that are working now were not there. So we need to const, and also because we did this, as I was telling you, uh, it started off in when the gender gap became very visible to us, in two senses. One was the pay gap. Gender pay gap or any pay gap in IT is they tend to be very big. For that, we took lots of uh, decisions and actions and it, it was a road that ended up in having uh, transparency and a roadmap with public salaries uh, visible and explained, right? So we, we reduced our pay gap Thanks to the UN's uh, tools, we uh, we reduced our pay gap. We made it visible. We we gave people ownership and visibility on how to develop their professional skills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we opened up lots of opportunities with mentoring, etc. That was one of the big issues that we attacked when we became signatory for WEBS. The other big issue was that had a lot to do with how gender um, gender gaps and, and gender inequality had a lot to do with gender stereotypes. So we worked a lot on that, on why women don't go into STEM uh, uh, professions or leadership styles, or even uh, the co-responsibility of parenting. And we worked a lot in those areas. <clears throat> now, that was many years ago, and there's th those things are very normalized now in our culture. Like people say, yeah, but that's how abstract it works, right? Like this is normal. And with that, we, we make it less visible how relevant that is and the impact that has on society. So we thought of going to the target gender equality because maybe some of the problem is because we are a bootstrapped company that we are not putting so much effort into how we set those targets, we uh, have those metrics, how we are com uh, communicating them. Uh, we're figuring out that when we do uh, nonviolent communication uh, training for the whole of the company, people don't see it connected to gender equality or SDGs or the impact that we want to make into the world and they see it more as a tool. And so this, this communication that Gemma was talking about, how we communicate what we're doing and the impact that has. Uh, and it's very challenging because everything is so rapid. Everybody, there's so much noise. <laughs> there's so much noise that having people's attention and, and you have to communicate the same thing over and over again in different ways. So we even created a, a podcast for us to share where, where I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm actually the podcaster, <laughs> uh, when, where we share this, because sometimes you share it for your stakeholders at, uh, inside the company, whether it is the employees, we don't have a board, right? Our board is the, it's privately owned. So uh, we have four uh, board members with, uh, who are the co-founders and they added, um, um, a female colleague. So there is gender perspective in 100% of the board, but we need to make this visible and clear for more people. So I, I wonder, um, I want to thank uh, you guys for inviting me uh, because this is also part of the Build Bridge uh, 
bridging, building those bridges, sorry. Uh, and we even do it with our podcast in an entertaining way to see whatever it is that works so that people gain awareness of why gender equality is so connected to our well-being in, in to having more integral lifestyles because well we've seen the impact that this is having on our mental health this is having on the way we coexist as societies and the levels of violence that we have so i don't know it's it's part of the quest you know so i i'm hopeful that target gender um is going to help us there Thank you so much, Vera, and thank you so much, Gemma. Um, I, I personally really enjoyed listening to to both of your uh, your company's journeys. It's it's so nice to to see how passionate you are about uh, your commitment to to the webs and to the the gender equality journey, not just within your your company, but within you know the marketplace and the community as well. It's been particularly interesting to hear about you know the innovative uh, approaches that you've taken to to spread the message as well um, uh, beyond your beyond your uh, the four walls of of your workplace, uh, so to speak. Um, I think most of the questions have been answered in the in the chat. If there are any additional questions, uh, possibly for Vera and Emma, I think there was one question, Vera, for you about the the podcast. So if you can share that in the in the chat, and then in the meantime, I'd like to pass over to um, my colleague Cynthia to share some closing remarks, followed by Anna Falt. Hi, thank you everyone. Um... And Lena, please, if uh, if I'm breaking up, please let me know and I will switch off my camera just because my connection has been terrible. But I wanted to at least try to start with my camera on. Uh, so um, although I'm not Anna, I'm, <laughs> I'm Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Mufu, and I'm Head of Human Rights and Gender of the Global Compact. And um, I just want to thank all of you for joining us today um, on the pod, on on this webinar. Um, it's really been inspiring to to listen to to all of you and the work that you're doing on this journey. Um, at the Global Compact, we really have where the gender equality um, work is concerned, we really actually just have one mission. Our aim is really to spread the word um, with the private sector about how important gender equality is um, to our well-being. We are always saying that SDG 5 is critical to all the SDGs. Um, and I think we say that a lot, but um, and people are getting used to just hearing it without really hearing it. Um, but it is absolutely critical to, um, as, as Vera said, our well-being, you know, it's, criti it's critical to absolutely everything in our ecosystem. And where the, the workplace is concerned, where the private sector is concerned, um, we only have to look at sort of the recent, uh, you know, gender equality gap analysis, gap report, sorry, the WEF report, to see that in other areas, things may be moving along, things may be progressing, but in the economic sphere, where women's economic inclusion and empowerment are concerned, that's where we're regressing, which was really very depressing to see. But what it does remind us is that this work, this, this work we do is, 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 is important. And we have to find all ways uh, to, to get the message across. And I love, I'm, I was so happy to hear all the innovative ways, you know, in our work, we're very much doing the bread and butter, you know, we're working on making sure that our companies um, understand what gender equality is, understand why it's important, why the business case is so strong, but also why it's important to the people that work in, in companies. Um, but what I, and we provide that support and that structure and things like the WEPS 101 is so important to sensitizing and to introducing that there's such a thing as the women's empowerment principles that can guide all of us in our work. We're not left out there on our own. So that's absolutely critical. But what is so wonderful to see is the innovative way that you know, companies are owning this, this mandate, this journey, to find ways to make sure that we accelerate this work. Um, so I've, I've been really inspired by uh, this afternoon. Uh, I can't wait to, to listen to the podcast. Um, I, I think we need to start thinking about other exciting ways to sort of get that message across. Uh, so I, thank you so much for sharing that. 
um, certainly our work, um, you know, at the Global Compact is really about uh, not just about sort of the setting of the targets, obviously, with, with programs like target gender equality, where we're raising that, but we're really now focusing on, so what is it? With, with, we're coming up to the halfway mark of um, the Sustainable Development Goals. What is it that we need to do to accelerate, um, accelerate uh, us reaching uh, our goals by 2030? Um, what are the different ways in which we can engage with the private sector? What are the different ways in which we can engage with, with our, the whole ecosystem around business? Um, and that is the focus. And so um, we are constantly looking for ways to do that. And this is just the beginning of the journey where you know, gender equality is concerned. Uh, no matter where you are in your journey, I think the WEPS 101 is such a good way to start, um, to hear from others who are on that journey, to hear the opportunities, the challenges, and the fact that this is possible. It's not, dif it's not difficult, actually. It is absolutely uh, critical to the work we do. And we can't, I think we forget sometimes that although we keep doing this work, there's actually no other way we can go. We have to move forward. Um, you know, we, whilst we say the business case is clear and we say it because we want business to understand that it, it, is, it is useful to be part of this journey, there actually is no other way. Um, so I'm really thrilled to, to see that we are looking for innovative ways to move forward. Um, and we hope that, you know, when the next report comes out next year, where you know women's economic empowerment and inclusion is concerned we see the numbers going in the opposite direction so i just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who have attended thank you so much to our panelists um really really inspiring today i, I love i love these calls but this today was super super fun um and uh i look forward to working with all of you and to those of you who are not yet web signatories um uh you know or thinking about it uh we, you know, we're obviously here um, to, to support that journey in any way we can. So thank you so much. And I will hand over to my colleague, Anna. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Cynthia. And uh, just building on, on your closing remarks, um, just to mention that uh, the WEPS is indeed a, a great framework and a blueprint for companies to understand the road towards contributing to gender equality. But it is also a huge network of companies from around the world that are coming together to share good practices and lessons learned. So uh, we encourage you, and, and Miwa earlier showed some of the case studies that we already have on the website where the companies have shared their journeys and their stories, but we also encourage you to, to come um, and join the webs and also share what you've been doing because only by sharing and, and um, showcasing what you're doing. And, and some companies are really gone outside the box and looked for solutions uh, that are not the traditional ones. And we encourage you to not think if, if it's not working, we hear often companies saying, um, we can't find the women. We want to have women on the board. We want women in the executive team. We want more women and employees, but we can't find them. Where do we find them? It's very simple, think differently, because if you're continuing what you've been doing in the past, you're not going to achieve suddenly great results. <clears throat> you need to kind of look at new ways. And one very um, inspiring example from an, a Latin American airline is that they, they wanted to have 50-50 women and men pilots. And there was difficulties to get those pilots on board that had 250 hours of flight hours so they bought simulators and those simulators allowed uh, the women to, to catch up on, on the men. So it's, it's really about thinking about like different ways of doing things. And I think today, uh, Vera and Hema have really showed really interesting examples. Um, and um, I wanted to say also, Vera, you were talking about that well-being and, and uh, how the, the staff are enjoying um, being supported, et cetera. And I think it's staff are looking at this change, um, whether to decide whether to move to another company or to stay. So it really helps the retention rates. Uh, but you also have business partners that say, oh, this is a great company. We want to work with them. So it attracts business partners. It attracts, if you're a manufacturer, it attracts consumers. Uh, but also uh, what we see through gender lens investing, a lot of investors today are looking at companies 
the care for the well-being of uh, the talent, uh, the business partners, but greater society. So that change that you are generating is not invisible. It is visible to a, a lot of different stakeholders. And um, I, I wanted to just say that UN Women is here to support you um, in getting on board to be a web signatory, but also once, as Miwa was saying earlier, there it doesn't stop with the signature. Um, it, it does continue. Um, there were a few questions that I think were left unanswered, but I think we can um, address them maybe by email. Uh, one was how many people would need to be involved in gender action plan. Miwa was talking about the webs to learn. Uh, we have a module there that goes through and talks you through the whole process. And that also talks addresses the question about internal resources needed. Um, when to join? We welcome you to join today. Companies join when they are um, as a launch pad uh, to get started and kickstart gender equality work, or they might feel that they need to have done something. And then it, it um, <clears throat> basically um, uh, indicates that that commitment is there and it's going to go forward. So we are here no matter what, um, both from Global Compact and UN Women to support you on your journeys and we welcome uh, you on board. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Cynthia and Anna for your for your remarks and Vera and, and Hema and uh, for your participation on the on the panel today. Um, we, we will be in touch. Uh, please feel free to reach out to um, any of the following emails, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all.